Okay, so this is an absolutely impossible question for US Simile. This is literally how you get a 280 on the exam. And I'm not being hyperbolic here, writing this really weird question because I think that this is supposed to be entertaining. This is literally on the NBME exams for step one. I believe it's NBME 20, which at the time of this video is soon to be an offline form. When I first saw this question from the NBME exam, I thought it was an erratum. Okay, so if I don't preface like I'm doing now, and you were to see this question, you'd be like, oh, that's like wrong. Like, that's definitely an erratum. Okay, as that was my impression. But we can't disagree with what's on the NBME exams. The NBME is the USMLE. There's a reason why people don't get a score of 300 on the exam. It's because no matter how much you know, there's always going to be a question or two that's quite fucking weird. Okay. And this is an example from the NBMEs. So I'm going to teach you this factoid. You're going to say, what the fuck? That's not right. It's on the exam. Okay. So this is my long preface. Now let's, I'm going to teach you this weird factoid. So 13 year old boy brought into emergency. He's had jerky movements past 24 hours. Vitals are normal. ECG normal. Echo shows left atrial dilatation. Left ventricular architecture is normal. It's not enlarged. Ejection fraction is normal at 65%. The range is 55 to 70. His legs are shown. This is a picture of erythema marginatum, which is consistent with rheumatic heart disease slash rheumatic fever. Erythema marginatum, not erythema multiforme, not, er not erythema nodosum, erythema marginatum, is an annular ring-like, an annular rash, or serpiginous rash, serpent-like, like a snake, okay? and so this is our diagnosis so far. Not hard, not complicated. You're wondering what, what's the big deal? I agree. Nothing weird so far. So now we have to say, well, what kind of murmurs would we expect in rheumatic heart disease? So an important factoid for you is that 99% of mitral stenoses are due to history of rheumatic fever. So, and I say history because not acutely, we do not expect this kid to have a mitral stenosis. In acute rheumatic heart disease, it's mitral regurgitation. Later on, mitral stenosis, okay? So can rheumatic heart disease sometimes affect other valves like the aortic valve? Yes, very fucking rare. And in real life, rare. US simile, it's going to be the mitral valve. Okay, as I said, mitral regurg early, mitral stenosis late, bearing in mind that uh, 10 years from now could be mitral stenosis. And once again, 99% of mitral stenosis due to rheumatic fever. So that also is not super complicated. Students will say, yeah, I know that trick already, or I know that, I know that detail. Like, you know, that's not a big deal. I agree. So why am I being overly uh, emphatic right now? So now we're going to look at these answers. So in terms of the numbers, we have a scale of six for heart murmurs. One on six is super uh, inaudible. They say colloquially cardiologist only. Okay, meaning you can barely, as a student, you probably wouldn't even hear it. Uh, so faint. Two on six means very faint with your stethoscope. Three on six is loud with your stethoscope, easy, easily audible with your stethoscope. Four on six is with a thrill or heave. Okay, so uh, a thrill is a palpable murmur, and a heave can be the actual chest wall, an impulse moving outwardly because the murmur is uh, strong, okay? So four, the, four on six is classically seen with VSDs, okay? On USMLE. So five on six means you can hear the murmur with just the rim of your stethoscope. Six on six is you can hear it without your stethoscope. Six on, and you like literally across the room, that's usually patients who have mechanical valves. So you'd be sitting doing your examination and the patient has a, you can he actually hear a click and that will be the mechanical valve the patient has. So, so that's the number system. We go into now. We're going to look at these answers, and we're expecting a mitral regurgitation because this kid has acute rheumatic fever. Okay. Choice A: two on six holosystolic murmur, left sternal border. Wrong fucking answer. That refers to VSD. Mitral regurg is a holosystolic murmur, but it's classically at the fourth intercostal space, left midclavicular line, plus or minus radiation to the axilla. It doesn't have to radiate, okay? But it's not going to be at the left sternal border. That's classically a VSD, all right? So we just keep 
looking at other, other, other answer choices. Choice B, two on six, mid-systolic murmur, fourth intercostal space, left midclavicular line. That's the mitral location, but it's a mid-systolic murmur. That's not consistent with mitral regurge. You could say, couldn't that be mitral valve prolapse? Number one, we're not looking for a mitral valve prolapse here. Number two, they'll say mid-systolic click. They're not just going to say mid-systolic murmur. So, so far, this doesn't sound like uh, mitral regurge. Uh, we want we want a holosystolic murmur at the mitral location. Choice C, three on six, decrescendo diastolic murmur, second intercostal space, left sternal border. That's pulmonic regurge. If uh, they want aortic regurge, it'll be at the right sternal border, second intercostal space, and it's classically a decrescendo holodiastolic murmur. Choice D, four on six, two and fro murmur at the left and right sternal borders. To and fro is another way of saying continuous machinery-like murmur, or pan-systolic, pan-diastolic. Pan and holo are the same thing, okay? Mid and crescendo-decrescendo are the same thing. So this is just a uh, patent ductus arteriosus, to and fro, continuous machinery, pan-systolic, pan-diastolic, okay? So that's wrong answer. Choice E, fixed splitting of S2 is an atrial septal defect, wrong answer. So you're probably like, wait, what the fuck? I don't get it. What's the answer then? It's choice B which is our two on six mid-systolic murmur at fourth intercostal space left mid clavicular line, makes no fucking sense because we just said that mitral regurge is going to be a holo systolic murmur at the mitral location, not a mid-systolic murmur. This is what they do on the NBME exam for step one, but the reverse. So the reason I say it's an impossible question is because they say in the vignette that there's someone who has mild left atrial dilatation with normal left ventricle that's not enlarged, and they say there's a mid-systolic murmur, and then the answer was just mitral regurge. Impossible, because never seen mitral regurge described as a mid-systolic murmur. And I can't reiterate more that if a student were to ask me what the murmurs sound like, say mitral regurge is holo, uh, mid-systolic classically refers to aortic stenosis or HACM, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, at aortic location. Okay, that's that's your mid-systolic murmur. Mitral regurge, classically holo. So how do we reconcile? How do we reconcile and say, how am I supposed to get this right on the exam then? It's because your additional factoid now is if the USMLE chooses to give you a mid-systolic murmur and they explicitly tell you that there's left atrial dilatation, but the left ventricle is normal and not enlarged, it's mitral regurge. Because in theory, if we have to reverse engineer an explanation here, because this is the answer we're dealing with on the NBME, in theory, if we have an aortic stenosis or HACM, we are going to have left ventricular architectural changes. We will have left ventricular hypertrophy, okay? In conjunction with that mid-systolic murmur. So, and even if you were to make an argument, well, couldn't you have aortic stenosis or HACM that's early and your left ventricle hasn't changed yet? Yes, but if it's early, then your left atrium certainly would not dilate yet, okay? So in order to have left atrial dilatation, in the setting of aortic stenosis or HACM, you would expect that the left ventricle has already hypertrophied first, right? So that's not what we have here. We have a normal left ventricle. We have left atrial dilatation with a mid-systolic murmur. That's mitral regurge. Sounds like a fucking erratum, okay? I We can't argue with what's on the NBME exam. So this is the learning point here, is that you're going to have mitral regurge early in rheumatic fever. You're going to have mitral stenosis late. Mitral regurge, classically, holosystolic murmur, fourth intercostal space, left midclavicular line, plus or minus radiation to the axilla. Mitral stenosis late is going to be usually a rumbling diastolic murmur, mid to late, decrescendo, with an opening snap. Okay? And then if you want your 280 on the US simile, you can say, very fucking rarely, mitral regurge can be mid systolic if they explicitly tell you that the left ventricle is normal, and that there's left atrial dilatation. That's the exam, not my opinion, okay? It's not my opinion. Um, this is how you get your points, okay? It's hearing stuff that's weird, learning a trick, and then in turn you see it on your exam, you get it right, all your other friends get it wrong, and you're like, oh, I heard that before, okay? It's how it fucking works, it's karmic. I'll obviously make more content, 
If you liked this clip, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time.